Bienvenidos, Usham Deed, and welcome University of Maryland Global Campus Learners from the CMIT 456 Section 6380 course for the fall 2021 semester. This is the Cisco Networking Academy's CCMP NRC version 8 course curriculum. And in this packet tracer tutorial and activity, we're going to be taking a look at the final packet tracer activity for the NRC course, which is activity 23.2.2, where we're going to be exploring a NetFlow implementation. Now, I'm going to be adding some value to this activity by talking about NetFlow version 9, or sometimes you'll hear it referred to as flexible NetFlow. And this is different from version 5. Again, NetFlow... Version 5 is legacy, and most implementations nowadays are going to be using flexible NetFlow or NetFlow V9 for version 9. So let's go ahead and dive in to this activity. We're actually going to see the configuration on the Edge router to see how the NetFlow has been configured. We're going to see that it's exporting the NetFlow information to a NetFlow collector. Now, this is kind of an ambiguous term here, right? NetFlow collector. Well, what can collect NetFlow? So you could use solar winds. You could use what's up gold, any type of you know network management system that's an enterprise type solution is something that you could use to collect NetFlow with. And so those, again, those are just some of the tools that you could use. I'm sure there's other tools that are out there, but you get the idea. I just wanted to make sure that I explain that when we're talking about NetFlow collectors, uh, you know, what exactly that is. All right. So let's go ahead and observe NetFlow records in one direction. We're going to open the NetFlow collector up and we're going to click on the desktop tab. Now, this is the NetFlow collector service here, and you can see that the service is on. So click the on radio button to activate the collector if necessary. It was already on. Position and size the window so that it's visible from the packet tracer topology window. And that means we're going to bring that over here. And let's go ahead and stretch this out. And then what we're going to do is we're going to open up PC1, and we're going to ping the default gateway from PC1. And again, that default gateway... Uh, value, if you're not clear on what that is, it gives it to us up there. It's 10001. We could always confirm that by taking a look here at the configuration. So let's go ahead and quit out of that and let's ping 10.0.0.1. Now, there go the four ping packets. You can see that all of those packets were successful. And after a brief delay, and this is the key right here, after a brief delay, the NetFlow, uh, NetFlow collector screen will display a pie chart. The first set of pings may not be sent to the collector because the ARP process has to resolve the IP and the MAC addresses. If after 30 seconds the pie chart doesn't appear, we're going to ping the default gateway again. And so let's go ahead and do that because we're not seeing any activity here. And I think what I might do is we may end up checking to see if the dash T, let's see if the dash T option works here in Packet Tracer. And I believe that it does. And so what this is going to do is the T simply means don't stop after four pings. We're going to be doing a continuous series of pings. So we're on the NetFlow collector. We went to the desktop here. You can see that it's on, but we're not seeing anything. So I'm going to turn it off and then turn it back on. And what's interesting is the previous uh, or the CCNA version of this activity had similar challenges with displaying the chart. And again, this activity, I haven't made any additional changes here. So we should be seeing this information, uh, but we are not. So let me make sure, click on the, oh, I'm sorry click on the NetFlow collector. Did I click on the? Yeah, okay, click on the NetFlow collector and it is on. Let's make sure that we are, and that is the desktop tab. I'm just double checking here to make sure we've got following the instructions. So on the NetFlow collector, click the desktop tab. There's the desktop tab. Click the NetFlow collector icon, which is that one right there. The service is on. And let me go ahead and say control C here. And let's see if we see anything in the collector. And again, it does not appear that we are collecting any information here. And there's got to be, ah, there it is. Okay, so 
<laughs> after, after waiting, we are now seeing the pie chart. So either the pie chart or the legend, or click on either the pie chart or the legend. So let's click on the pie chart and it's gonna display the information. So here is the net flow information that we are collecting. Here's, and you can see right here, it's kind of a little small. It says flow information. We're getting the source address. We're getting the destination address. We're getting the transport source address. And they're ICMP packets, which is why we're seeing zero and zero here. Um, IP protocol one. We're getting the timestamp of the first packet, the timestamp of the last packet. Any TCP flags that could be associated with that. Here's our counter in bytes and the number of packets. And so it was around 76 packets, the interface on which I'm collecting, and then the interface output, which is just simply null. Now, here's where we're gonna add some value. You might be looking at this and saying, well, this is great. Okay, so how is it that the ping that's going through the switch is ending up down here on the NetFlow collector? Well, remember, it's going to be the router and the router configuration for NetFlow that is dictating what's happening here. So let's log on to this edge router. Let's get into privilege exec and let's say show run. And now we're gonna see what flexible NetFlow looks like here, or NetFlow V9. So here's your flow exporter. And where are we exporting the flow to? And again, this is just some name that you can create here, right? Because you, this is why one of the reasons we refer to it as flexible is I can send my flows out to a whole bunch of different uh, stations to be processed, right? A different uh, network management systems. If I had What's Up Gold and Solar Winds in my environment, I could send it to both, right? So here's the first destination statement. And the 10.0.0.100, that is the NetFlow collector. So it's the router that's saying, hey, we're going to be sending the NetFlow information to this destination, and I'm going to be using that UDP port to do it. Now, Here's where we get the flow record. So take a look here. Match the source address, the destination address, the transport source, the transport destination. Match the IPv4 protocol, and then collect this other information from that. The timestamp, first and last. So all of the information you're seeing over here in this window on the right-hand side that's being given to us by the NetFlow collector, you know, air quotes around GUI representation of the NetFlow data, that is what this is, uh, The let me take a step back here, the router configuration for the flow record, record one, and again, that's you just give it some arbitrary name, and then you put in what is it that you want to see. So this is the information that I want to see. And then we create a flow monitor. Now the flow monitor, which we're referring to as MON1, which ties to record, record one, this flow record right here, and the exporter, which is where we're sending it to. So again, you create the exporter, the record, then you create the monitor, and this is how we then say, okay, well, I'm gonna put this monitor on an interface and on that interface, that's how I'm collecting the NetFlow data. And there it is right there, gig zero, zero in the input direction. Again, input flows from the land, and now we could have input flows from the internet. Now, let's take a look at the serial 001 interface to see, and absolutely, we have IP flow monitor, MON1 input. So we're going to also be collecting NetFlow data on this outside interface here that goes to the internet. But that's it, right? And well, I shouldn't say that's it. You have a statement down here for IP flow export version 9 as opposed to version 5. Again, version 5 is legacy. You're probably a greenfield deployment. You're probably not going to see that. You're going to be using flexible NetFlow version 9. But again, to recap, very straightforward. We've got our exporter. We've got our record, what it is we're collecting. The exporter, who we're exporting all of this information to. We create the monitor, and then we slap that onto the interfaces that we want to have monitored by NetFlow. And the interfaces through which data passing, we're going to collect that NetFlow data and then send it over to the NetFlow collector so we can get these nice GUIs like this. Now, solar winds again. 
provides a much nicer interface. You know, I mean, this is sort of, you know, your bare bones. Hey, take a look. It's IPv4 source address traffic, and then here's the traffic that we see, right? All right, so the flow record has entries similar to the table above. And again, we are dictating these entries based on the flow record that we're creating. You know, what is it that we want to record? So here's all that information that we are recording. And the, interf uh, the interface output null, that's the interface of the flow exporter that collected the flow uh, in the output direction. So out of the monitoring interface, the value is null because this ping was to the input interface. And that's why we see null there. All right, so uh, let's see what we've got here. We're going to be moving on. The edge router has been configured. The LAN interface is configured to monitor the flows from the LAN. The serial interface is configured uh, to collect flows from the internet. And we already saw that, right? And we saw uh, that collection configuration to see traffic that matches the full bi-directional or a full bi-directional session. The NetFlow exporter would need to be configured to collect flows entering and leaving the network. So now we're going to go over to PC2. So let's pull PC2 up here. We're going to generate what appears to be some additional traffic. And as you can see there, we've got a web server out here. We might be hitting that, but first it wants us to ping the default gateway. So we're going to say ping 10.0.0.1. And again, if you wanted this to be a continuous ping for whatever reason, you could say minus T or dash T. And then it would run. And I'm going to let this run here while we take a look at what we're going to be doing. So what do you expect to see in the NetFlow collector flow records? Now, remember, as of right now, no traffic that we have sent from either PC1 or PC2 is egress out to the internet. It's all ingress into the edge router. So that's why we're not seeing any input flows coming back from the internet. All of our traffic has been limited to hitting this inside interface on the router. And that is what we're seeing. And I'll do control C here. That is what we're seeing information over here in our NetFlow collector, right? Or seeing information for in the NetFlow collector. So what do you expect to see for the flow records? What statistics for the existing flow record change? All right, we'll take a look at this. So again, it takes it, be patient. It's gonna take it some time to update. I would definitely kick the dash T flag on. So here is our new record. Remember, that was the first one, uh, 10, 0, 0, 10, that's PC1, here's PC2. And again, you can see the pie chart, we're about 50-50 in terms of the information that we're collecting. So what do we expect to see? Well, we expect to see the exact same thing that we saw with PC1, with the exception of the source address is gonna be different. Again, we're still pinging. So from that respect, the transmission source port destination port, because it's ICMP is gonna be zero. The IP protocol is gonna be one. Timestamp's probably gonna be different. No TCP flags. The bytes are different because the, the ping um, duration was shortened by me. And you can see we've got 38 packets. Input interface is the same, and the output interfa or interface output is null, again, because it's not a bidirectional capture here that we're doing. All right, so return to PC1 and report, uh, repeat the ping to the gateway. How will this traffic be represented as a new segment in the pie chart, or will it modify the existing values? And that's a great question here in Packet Tracer. What is Packet Tracer going to do? So let's kick that off. And then it's going to want us to issue pings from PC3 and PC4 to the gateway address. What should happen to the display in the flow collector? Well, my guess is PC3 and PC4 are going to have their own mutually exclusive, unique entries here on the left-hand side. This pie chart should be carved up into either four or five slices. We're about to find out here when I do Control C, because we're going to find out whether uh, this record just simply updates or we get a net new record. My guess is we get uh, it's going to update, but I could be wrong. We'll see. So while we're waiting for updates there, let's pull PC3 and 4 down. Ah, and there we go. So we received the update. However, look what happened. We got uh, a new set of information. Oh, I'm sorry. That is the colors actually changed. Interesting. So the colors changed here. Where blue is now PC2, green is PC1. Okay, so, but again... It looks like, is that net new or did it update? I want to say 
that it looks like it redid everything here. Contribution two out of three. So we're not seeing three different layouts here. I think that's what we're going to see when we add PC three and four. And so again, the colors did swap. I'll say ping minus T 10.0.0.1. And then we'll come over to PC four and we're going to do the exact same thing. Again, the key takeaway in this activity is yes, with the network management tool, you're going to see this pie chart, but more importantly, how do we configure the router 10.0.0.1? And we'll do a dash T here as well. And again, most current day routers are going to support, especially on the Cisco side of the house, are going to support flexible NetFlow. They're going to support NetFlow version 9. And remember, I'm kind of using those terms synonymously, flexible NetFlow and NetFlow v9. All right, so let's do control C. Let's kill that. And then let's come back over here. And hopefully we're going to kill this. And our NetFlow collector should update. And I'm anticipating we're going to see four different colors one representing each of the PCs. Uh, and it looks like maybe, what do we have here? Ah, oh, there we go. Okay. I was getting a little concerned that we didn't get the last one. So, but you can see here, the colors changed again. So 10, 0, 0, 10 PC one is now pink. 12, which is PC three is yellow. 13, which is PC four is green. And PC two is now blue. Right, So you can see there were some mix-ups of, of the colors. However, it appears that what's happening is it is just simply sort of aggregating uh, the data. The counterbytes appear to be going up. And are we still pinging? We're not pinging there. All right. So that gives us a good idea as to what we're going to see in the collector. So observe the flow records for a session that enters and leaves. So now we're going to be going out uh, to the internet. And we're going to be getting traffic in both directions. So access the web server by IP address. Now, before continuing, it wants us to power cycle the NetFlow collector. All right, so we're going to close that. I'm going to go to the, phys oops, sorry, the physical tab. Here's the power button. I'm going to press it. You can see the light goes out. You can also see that our link lights go down here in the Packet Tracer main window. Let's bring the PC back online. Again, while we're talking here, we're going to let Spanning Tree do its thing because PortFast is not on. My guess is we've got about 30 seconds. So before continuing power cycle, the NetFlow collector, the flows are going to clear. Then we're going to click on the NetFlow collector. We're going to go to the physical tab. Oh, I'm sorry. That's actually telling us how to turn it on and off. Okay. Before you access the web server, predict how many flows there will be in the pie chart. Well, there's clearly going to be more flows than we saw before. Um, with respect to, uh, I would assume, the segments, the because it's going to be TCP. And let's see here. We're going to come down to the NetFlow collector icon. You can see that it is off. We're going to turn it on. And that's interesting because when the activity started, it was actually on. So let's go ahead and jump onto PC1. Let's get out to the desktop. Let's get to the web browser. And let's go ahead and type in HTTP colon slash slash 192.0.2 dot 100 and let's see what we see here all right so we'll take a look at the copyrights we'll go back we'll refresh the page and i'm just going to click go a whole bunch of times here right so we want to generate as much tcp traffic as we can so we'll say go 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 we'll take a step back here go 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 and all right well it looks like we're going to have some data here and this is definitely interesting. It looks like, whoa, all right. So we clearly went overboard here on what it is uh, we were going to see. And it looks like it might still be collecting some data. Let me kill that window. And we're going to try to get the yellow. Or let's, can I click here? Yeah, we can click over here and get the yellow. So let's take a look at what we see here. So we see the IPv4 source address. You can see the source port, and then the destination port is 1057. Then the destination port, I'm sorry, uh, the source port is 1030. Those, those were backwards up here. Oh, I'm sorry, because we're seeing the traffic coming in both ways. I was anticipating we, we should be seeing multiple different source ports, and we are. Uh, so you can see there, as I was moving around in the browser, it appears that it was giving me a, def a different source port, the random high source port going out. The destination should be 80. And then here's our return traffic, right? So the source port is 80. It's coming back to me. 
And I'm assuming we're doing port address translation here. So let's check that out as well. So let's say show IP NAT translations, or how about show IP NAT statistics? We're going to see anything. Wait a second. We're not doing any NAT. Show IP, or how about show run here? Let's see what we've got. If NAT is even configured. So it doesn't look like, uh, no, there is no NAT configured here. So we're just simply seeing different random high source ports. And maybe every time I was clicking go, it's sort of like this refreshing type thing where it initiates a new TCP connection. And that would explain the multiple random high source ports that we're seeing. Uh, but again, the destination port when going through or coming from the LAN, the destination port should always be 80 because we were HTTP. And so that's actually what we see, the input interface, serial 001, and then the output interface, right? So what interface did it go out that we are also monitoring? Predict the web page values for uh, the NetFlow exporter traffic that's returning, right? So again, the source IP is going to be PC1. The destination IP is going to be the www.example.com, the 192.0.2.100. Source port, again, we're seeing random highs there. Destination port's going to be 80. Input interface is gig zero. Output interface is serial 000. And then we see the reverse here. Source IP is going to be the 192.0.2.100. The destination IP, in fact, if we were to take a quick step back, you can see that, that the destination IP is going to actually be the IP of the PC because we are not doing any kind of NAT here. Source port is going to be 80. The destination port is going to be that random high value in that ephemeral range. The input interface is going to be the serial interface. The output interface is going to be the gig 00 interface. So we did this here. I clicked on go and I clicked on go. Maybe got a little over exuberant there. The pie chart did appear. Um, click on the copyrights page. We did. The port numbers did change, I believe, when we were clicking on the uh, copyrights page. Compare the flows we did. Access the web server by URL. So power cycle the NetFlow collector. Actually, we did that. Uh, and I guess they wanted you to access it. So let's do this. So we can turn the... So we just did it by URL here. So what I would do is click on this, go to physical, turn it off, turn it on, go back to desktop, go back to NetFlow collector, Turn the collection services on. Let's click the fast forward arrows here so we're not waiting around. And now let's access it via the IP address. And this will be the last attempt that we make here. 192.0. Sorry, 192.0.2.100. And there's our copyrights page. So I'm gonna so we hit the main page, we're gonna hit the copyrights page, and I'm gonna close it. And that's it. And we're gonna wait for our chart to be displayed here from the NetFlow collected collection activity, and there it is. And so let's see what we've got here. So we've got four things going on. So here is the source packet. This is the return packet coming back in, and you can see TCP destination port, I'm sorry, transmission destination port, transmission source port, and the IP protocol is six for TCP. And then this packet is another return packet. This is an outgoing packet or an outbound packet from our LAN out to the internet to the web server because of the random high source port and the destination of 80 and the source and destination IPs. And the same thing is true here. All right. Well, after the flows are displayed, inspect each flow record. What values did you see in the IP protocol field? And it should be six. And that value means that it's TCP because HTTP uses TCP. All right. Well, that is going to do it for the final activity in the Anarsi CCMP Cisco Networking Academy course, Packet Tracer Activity 23.2.2. .2. Again, the main takeaway from that activity is you should be using version 9 NetFlow. The NetFlow collector could be SolarWinds. It could be some, uh, you know, What's Up Gold, or some other network management system that's capable of working with NetFlow data. And we saw the router configuration, and we saw just how easy it is to pick the things that we're interested in seeing. Source port, destination port, you know, what are we matching? What are the things we're trying to get? All right. I hope you've enjoyed the course. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to follow up with me. And as always, I hope to see you in the next video.